Good morning, church. It's good to be with you today. Today I want to talk about um, Uzzah and also mustard seed type faith. Uzzah is one of the most difficult Bible narratives for me that, that we've encountered in Samuel so far because of the seemingly good intentions of Uzzah and the uh, very harsh and swift consequences that came upon him. Um, 2 Samuel 6, you guys hopefully have read it and remember the story, but uh, David has decided it's time to retrieve the ark. We know it had been captured quite a while ago and has been outside of uh, the possession of the king and uh, it's been in Israelite territory, but it's just been kind of left alone and forgotten for a while ever since Eli um, and his sons, they all perished. The Philistines captured it, but they got sick and got terrified of the true God, so they sent it back. And so it's just been hanging out for a while. David wants to go get it, and then they mess up. If you, did you guys catch that detail? How are they carrying it back? They put it on a cart hauled by oxen. That's not how God said to do it. He said it had to be with those long poles through the holders, carried on the shoulders by the Levites, and specific Levites at that. So not just anybody could be doing this. They were doing it all sorts of the wrong way. And whether it's because David was ignorant and he didn't know, he just thought this was what was expedient. We're not really privy to the details of why David chose this route. Um, but then when the ox tumbled, the ark was going to fall. Uzzah did the thing that like, any of us would do. He reached out and steadied the ark. He touched it. But God said, no, that wasn't right. And he gave the prescribed penalty in his law. He killed Uzzah. And David is upset by this. And he is terrified at this. And so he diverts the ark. And um, then they do it right when they bring it back in the next time. It makes me think God has the right way for us to do things. He has a prescribed way for us to operate. Um, you know, in, in modern church, we function, even Black Hills Baptist functions with a very come as you are kind of attitude. And we very, um, I confess, casually enter the presence of God. And that might stem from our new covenant relationship with him, where in Hebrews, we're told we boldly approach the throne. Now we're not fearfully approaching. We're not worried about touching the holy articles in a wrong way. We're not worried about worshiping in an unprescribed manner as much. I mean, uh, we could talk more about that. But in general, we have less fear. We have more boldness that we get to engage God with. But then they had a very specific way that they should go about things. And I'm reminded that in Hebrews, it says our Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so God is still takes his holiness very seriously. His, his primary attribute is his holiness and how he sits above and beyond all things. So when we come into his presence, either to read his word, to pray, when we come to church, we should be mindful of Uzzah and seek God and say, God, I just want to come in a way that honors you and demonstrates my love for you so that I am not putting your name to shame. I'm not putting your people to shame. I'm not besmirching the good name of the church and the community, but rather we're lifting God up. We're honoring him above all things, and that's our goal. And we're going to seek faith. We want that mustard seed size faith, and the disciples couldn't help this young kid and they're fighting with the dad and Jesus gets upset and they ask him why couldn't we do it because you didn't have any faith you didn't have any faith if you just had a little bit just a little bit of faith you could have accomplished this task and many more such a um, striking declaration that Jesus makes and it strikes my own heart it cuts my own spirit to say wow what where is my faith what is real faith even just a little bit of real faith look like 
And so, church, I encourage you to search your hearts here today and, and just pursue God and pursue him in real faith, the kind of faith that would step into the Jordan River when it's at a flood stage, the kind of faith that would march around Jericho, the kind of faith that would trust God with our very lives, trust him to do things his way and not our own. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow.